All right, we're uh, working on the next stages here of uh, this 38 Plymouth. Going through it. I was kind of humming and hawing about what my next project might be. And uh, I think I decided on brakes, actually. Because I've ordered some brand new tires. Um, I got Coker Bias Ply tires, exactly like those ones you see there, but new. And I figure if I'm going to put new tires on, I might as well sandblast all this and make it like new. And, and then when I put it back together and I put my chrome ring on and my, my beauty ring here, it's going to look pretty, pretty nice. These are original tires from the 60s. I dated them. This is a good year. Um, nylon cord that says 4 ply. 6.00-16 load range B that's a bias tire and I checked the date code and you can do that if you look up the tire on the website they'll teach you how to date code them and these tires dated from 1964 some track cracking here I mean I'm not going to be racing this thing on the highway but I want to be safe and I want to have good tires so I'm going to do that I'm going to take the rims and sandblast them and clean it up I might as well have uh, while I'm <laughs> wheels are off might as well get to the brakes I got parts so I thought maybe what I do is I do kind of a video for beginners on accessing the brakes and um, I've pre-bought some brake parts and I'm ready to go but I, I don't buy everything. I'll just rush out and buy everything because I don't know that I need everything but inside the car here you can see I got brand new flex hoses so a left and right for the front and there's one that goes to the rear and then I got uh, new uh, rubber seal kits for the uh, wheel cylinders. This is the dust seal on the outside. This is the inside piston seal. I got a master cylinder rebuild kit. And I'm going to just ac access the, uh, the shoes and see, see how they look. This one here, I've already got the drum off. But I'm going to walk you through how to take both one front and one rear drum off. So we'll start with the front on, the, on this side over here. I've taken a few steps to uh, to be ready to speed things up here for the sake of the video. So we've taken the rim off the wheel. At one point you should note is that the left and the right hand wheel lug nuts are threaded differently. Whatever side of the car you're on, you twist the nut towards the front of the bumper and that's tightening. So on this side it's reverse thread. If I turn it to the left I'm actually tightening it, putting the lug nuts tighter. And if I'm on the other side, it's backwards. I'm turning it, um, I'm turning it clockwise on the other side of the car, and it's tightening. This is counterclockwise for tightening. And I don't know what the real reason was. I suspect it might have been because maybe the thought was as you drive forward and you hit your brakes, the energy here and the inertia is turning. Maybe it would tend to want to self-tighten the lug nuts on both sides. I don't know. So, anyways, I've already got the wheel off here. This is the uh, grease cap. You know, pop that off with a screwdriver. I usually lay down some kind of a mat here, lay my parts on it, and this particular wheel has been uh, dripping brake fluid all winter. So there's your cotter pin. I don't reuse cotter pins generally. I always throw them out and I keep a supply and I, uh, I put new ones in every time. Pull that out, lay it down. This should be, I, I've already loosened it, so crescent wrench, something like that, whatever. Pretty simple, undo the nut. You go to put it back together, you, you only put a couple, one or two pounds or something on there, I think, and then that's, you put a cotter pin through it. You got a washer here, so you can just kind of wiggle the drum, access the washer. It's It fits in the slot here of the spindle. See, it's got a groove in it. This is greasy. This is your tapered wheel bearing. Old grease. That'll get cleaned up. And then the drum will just slide right off. If the brake shoes aren't adjusted too tight. If they're too tight, you want to back them off. And your drum. Wheel seal is in there. And there's another bearing in there too. There's a that's the inner bearing, and that one we pulled out is the outer bearing. So you got two bearings, one here and one here, holding the drum, supporting it. So looking in here, I can see that, sorry, I'm tripping on stuff here. 
quite a bit of brake fluid here. This area, it's dripping down, it's coming down here, it's dripping here, just brake fluid sitting here. So the good news is it's not on the brake pad, uh, shoes themselves. The brake shoes are clean. It trips out of here. This is the brake line that I showed you inside. There's one on each side here. It's cracked, dry. God knows this this car's I know it's been the last owner since the 60s. So those could be original brake lines. I'm not I'm not surprised if they are. Quite a bit of brake material left here. Looks really good. There's more up here than down here. That tells me they're out of adjustment. Um, I'll clean all this up later. It'll all come out. Wheel cylinders will come off. They'll all get rebuilt. I'll degrease everything and uh, use some brake clean on everything. And um, put it back together and set it up. I have a tool. I might as well show you my tool. A good friend of mine made this for me. I showed him a picture that I found online. And then he took a piece of rod and he threaded it. He's got his own lathe and he cut the threads in here and he welded it together for me. He built this. So this is designed to fit right here on the end. This is the spindle. The thread's on there like that. Then what I would do is I would put my drum on and I'd set it to the point where the, the shoe was just touching the inside of the drum in probably this area here or, or down here, maybe down here in the bottom. I think I can adjust it right here. And then I would take that take the drum back off and use that as my guide and I'd, I'd basically turn this around. Look at the big gap here. See here, there's a big gap up here. Can you see that? Let me get down there. Big gap right here. And down here it's almost touching. That's how, that should not be. These brakes should have the exact same clearance all the way around. Otherwise you're, all your braking is down here and that explains why I have less brake material here than I do up here. They're not working up here. The shoes are not contacting the drum up here. Over here, oh, look at that. I'm pretty much touching the brake shoe right there. And up here, I'm miles away. So this is a great little tool for helping you set up the brakes. Um, you could buy one and pay, oh, I think the last I heard you're going for about $700 US for the original tool. You don't need that. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to have the tool, but this is very adequate. I can adjust the height here. Yeah, I have enough threads here that I can do a 10 inch. This is a 10 inch drum. Or my 53 Chrysler has a 12 inch drum and it does both. Maybe my buddy should make these and sell them. I could probably sell those for 50 bucks each, eh? Would people pay 50 bucks for that? Probably. And the difference between a brake that works and a brake that is adjusted properly and is not leaking, of course, but after this has all been rebuilt with new parts and sealed up, and you adjust the brakes properly, oh boy, what a difference it makes. They stop really well. Really good, actually, brakes. But they hadn't quite figured out how to, or Chrysler hadn't decided to put on more modern self-adjusting brakes. So you have to get in there as they wear. And you'll notice you don't have as good brake feel anymore, and the pedal travels farther to the floor as this surface here wears. Um, you got to adjust them. You need that tool to do it. There's a minor adjustment, which basically just kind of centers the shoe here. But a major adjustment, you need a tool like this. I mean, you can kind of get close. If you want to screw around, spend hours trying to adjust your brake shoes. And I've heard of people putting masking tape on here and markers and stuff. And then trying to get it close. But it's hard. Because you need the exact same clearance from the center of this spindle right here to the edge of the drum. All the way around. That's called concentric. You need to be concentric to the spindle. All four corners need to be like that. I'm just going to get a rag here. And uh, we're going to go to the back brake next. Let me just move my light here. This goes so much better with a light. All right. So the back drum, as you can see, I've already taken the, the, uh, the wheel off. And this is a tapered axle, and the drum is pushed on a tapered shaft here. The axle's tapered. And there's a keyway in it to prevent it from turning, but these can be really stubborn and hard to get off. And you need a puller like this. They sell them on eBay. I think I paid, I don't know, maybe 75 bucks or something, maybe, or whatever for this three-legged puller. 
So you gotta find three bolts and use the lug nuts to keep them in place. Any three position will work. I took the nut off the shaft already. If I turn this out, when the nut came off, I took the, uh, there's a cotter pin here as well. I took the cotter pin out and I took the washer out. And what I did is I put the nut back on just a little bit here. That'll protect my threads and actually protect me. This, it could really stiff and hard to get out of here. It can be very hard to get this off. Um, I find that, sorry, that, I hope that light isn't causing too many problems. Let me grab another light here. So when I pull this, it can be really stiff and I need to get a big hammer and hammer this and it's gonna pull the drum off the tapered shaft. It could literally go flying. But by putting the nut back on here, we only need to move a tiny bit. See that gap there? The drum will pull out and stop it when it hits the nut. So I've already loosened this for the purposes of the video, but uh, see how I put the center of that tool there? Then you crank on it, look at the drums moving. It's never gonna be that easy. I've already loosened it. But in, in uh, for the purposes of this video, I've uh, sped things up here. And I'm going to lift this drum right off here so you can see. So let's just say that I had the hammer on that with a hammer and it comes out. It's loose now. Here it is. Drum's out. Drum looks good too. Another old set of brakes that uh, these are clean. So no leakage here. That's a good sign. Just for, for fun. I wonder how far out of adjustment these are. They look better to me. I see kind of a consistent wear all the way out or worn a bit more down here. They're out of adjustment. There's the keyway that's in the axle. Cotter pin, nut, tool. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna I'm gonna take all this apart and uh, I'm gonna put in a new wheel seals and I'll probably slide my axles out actually and um, I said wheel seals, I meant axle seals. Um, there's an outer axle seal here and there's one on the inside as well on the bearing. I'm gonna slide all that out. In one of my other videos, I talk about doing this job. I did it on my 53 Chrysler and I took some videos. So if you're interested, look for that video. I don't think I'm gonna make another one for the 38 for Plymouth here. It's the same procedure. A Little bit different design of the seals here. Um, new seals coming. I'm gonna slide the axles out and then I'm gonna probably drop the diff. I'm gonna pull the diff right out. You gotta you gotta remove the axles to get the diff out. It's called a third member actually, it all comes out kind of together. But I don't know if you can see it, but this is tapered. And as I said, there's a keyway in it right there. It sits in there and then your drum slides on that. I might be able to turn that. Ugh. There you go. You can see it. Drum slides in there. And when you put this back together, you're putting like 120 pounds, foot pounds of torque on there or something like that to tighten things up. And this one surprisingly came apart real easy. So hopefully the other side is as good. And that's kind of my lesson in accessing your brakes. You see brake fluid dripping out the bottom like we did on the front. We know they're leaking. This one's dry, but I'm rebuilding there all the brakes anyways. I rebuild each wheel cylinder. And then I think I'm probably gonna reuse the shoes. They don't look too bad. Anyways, that's it for now. Have a good one.